A friend of mine in college told me that his grandmother read Psalm 103 every day. And in many ways, this is what Psalm 103 is all about, not forgetting. You know, forgetting things is sometimes no big deal, but at other times it's critical and it can cost us dearly. When we forget God's benefits, it will cost us. Verse two says, forget not all his benefits. This Psalm is here that we might not forget because forgetting the benefits of God strangles the voice of praise. Now, I love the way this Psalm opens up. It says, praise the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Is that your common experience? Do you praise God with all that is inside you? If you're honest, you'd have to admit that you don't. I don't praise God with all that's in me. Sometimes nothing in me wants to praise God. Why is that? Well, it's because we forget God's benefits. We don't praise God because we forget all that he's done for us. Examine your life. Is it full of praising God? If not, there's not a complex, mysterious reason. We don't praise God because we forget what God has done for us. If we don't remember God's benefits, we have no reason to worship. There's no reason to praise God. A soul that's left unattended, that doesn't daily meditate on the acts and benefits of God, will have no basis to worship, no springboard, no, no drive, no motivation, no reason to praise. And we return quickly to a dullness and, and a barrenness. So let's look briefly at God's benefits. First, God forgives all your sins. This is verse three, not some, but all of your sins. And then verse four says, he redeems your life from the pit. He saves us from destruction and death. Apart from Christ, we crawl and just struggle our way into a pit. Verse 10 then says, he does not deal with us according to our sins. We do not receive what we deserve, thank God. And then verse 12 says, as far as the east is from the west. See, he hasn't just forgiven our, our sins, he's removed them from us as far as the east is from the west. When God sees you, he doesn't see your sin, he sees the righteousness of Christ. And then it says, I love this, he crowns you with steadfast love. What a picture, in verse four, he's crowning us with his love. God's favor, God is crowning us with love and compassion. I love this quote from Charles Spurgeon. He says, shall God crown us and shall we not crown him? Up my soul and cast thy crown at his feet and in lowest reverence worship him who has so greatly exalted thee as to lift thee from thy dunghill and set thee among princes. And then verse 11 says, how great is this love? Look, it, it says, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. How great is his love? As high as you can imagine. God is saying here, I love you as high as the heavens are above the earth. It can't be measured. It's an infinite love. Why does God lavish us with these benefits? forgiving us of sin and crowning us with his love? Because this is who God is. In verse eight, it says that he is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. I think one of the biggest mistakes we make is to think that God's love is like our love. And our love is very conditional. We so easily grow impatient and angry, and we can think that that's what God's love is like. He can only take so much of my sin. At some point, he's gonna get angry at us. He's, he's gonna be mad at us. He's, he's gonna be done with us. And when we think of our sin, it's not hard to, to think that God is gonna feel this way about. There has to be a limit with God's patience, right? God at some point has to be done with us. And then he'll just tolerate us because he has to. Hey, listen, if I were God, I would have been done with me a long time ago. But God's love is not like our love. It is a perfect and pure love. It's a divine, supernatural love that knows nothing of condition. This is who God is. And he has lavished this love upon us, not because of who we are, but in spite of who we are. 
Our love is nothing like this, it's so different. But God's love is perfect. So now what? Well, if forgetting the benefits of God strangles the voice of praise, then recounting the benefits of God fills our souls with praise. It doesn't just say, don't forget, it then turns it into a positive. Look at what these glorious benefits produced in, in David in verse 20. Uh, all of this recounting of God's goodness, he says in verse 20, Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So first David talks to the angels who don't need reminding. He's saying all the heavenly hosts, all that do his works, praise the Lord. And then he comes back down to earth, back to his own soul. And he says, don't you forget soul, I'm talking to you. Don't forget all his benefits. Your praise should be louder than the rest. Lift up your voice and give him glory.